Welcome back to Andy Cooks, and today we are talking about Okonomiyaki. And more specifically, we're talking about Osaka-style Okonomiyaki. So there's two types, there's Osaka and uh, Hiroshima. And the Hiroshima one has more noodley. The Osaka style that we're talking about today is far more common and kind of the ones that you get mainly outside of Japan. It's absolutely delicious. It's an umami flavor bomb and it's really not that hard to make. So let's get stuck in. Before we do, do me a favor. If you like this video at any point, smash that like button. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. We just went past 2 million subscribers and I'm super excited. So thank you all so much for subscribing. We are only just beginning on this channel and I can't wait to start bringing you some incredible new content next year where we're gonna do some really cool stuff overseas. So let's get stuck in. So what you're gonna need, you're gonna need flour and uh, just plain normal baker's flour, nothing crazy. The recipe will be below, but there's about 250 grams here. We're gonna need some baking powder, some corn flour, some eggs, some pickled ginger. This is kind of optional, but kind of not. It's kind of pretty important in the flavor and it's pretty easy to get to. Uh, and then this is which is uh, tempura pieces. Uh, you can buy this already made, or you can make it like I have here. To be honest, I tried to buy it because I was feeling lazy and I couldn't find it in my local Asian supermarket. So again, this is uh, very much optional, but I think it's worth the effort to go through because it, it's a really nice textual component. Cabbage, dashi stock. Uh, so this is just powdered dashi from the supermarket. You can make your own. We're home cooks. Let's not get too caught up on it. Suggest just making it. And that's pretty much it for what's actually needed. Other than that, you can do whatever you want. So it's really common to do it with some nice thin pork like we've got here. Um, we're gonna do spring onions. Uh, you can do prawns, shrimp, you can do chicken, octopus. You can really put in it whatever you kind of want. We're gonna keep it pretty kind of traditional, pretty classic, I guess, at the moment. And then we're gonna garnish the top with some, um, some sauce, some Okonomiyaki sauce. Uh, you can make this yourself, again, you know, these ones are pretty readily available at Asian supermarkets, or you can just look up a recipe to make it. It's basically, a, I guess, uh, a Japanese barbecue sauce, effectively, very similar kind of flavors. Uh, and then Kewpie Mayo. And I think for this recipe, it kind of has to be that brand, or it kind of, I mean, you can use any brand, but um, I think it kind of needs to be Kewpie Mayo. And then we've got some Bonito flakes for the top, and some, some nori, some toasted nori flakes. We've also got a couple of spring onions for good measure. Uh, but let's get stuck in. So we're gonna make the batter. So we're gonna start with 250 grams of flour. Um, once we've made this batter, we're gonna rest it while we get the rest of the ingredients together. To that, we're gonna add 70 grams of corn flour. And then also to add to that fluffiness, we're just gonna add a, a tablespoon of baking powder. So making a small well in the center, we're gonna add our two eggs. So then we're just gonna add our dashi. Dashi, I should say, not dashi. And we're gonna whisk this together. Now, conveniently, I still don't have a whisk in the studio for some reason. Um, that'll be rectified soon. But I have got this pastry cutter, so we'll use this to whisk instead. Uh, you don't need to kind of go crazy on this. It doesn't, it, you know, even when it's relatively smooth, it doesn't need to be silky smooth because once it cooks, it'll, it'll kind of sort itself out anyway. So we're just gonna chop this in the fridge to rest. So the cabbage, we've got a quarter of a head of cabbage here. To be honest, it's probably not quite enough, but um, it's pretty tightly packed, so we might be all right. Um, and you just want to have this cut this really thin. Now, there's a couple of ways to do it. If you've got really knife skills and a nice sharp knife, you can just kind of go through it like that. Um, you can use a mandolin, um, or if you, you can just dice it up really fine. It doesn't matter too much. You just want, don't want it too kind of thick. So I like to use a mandolin, it's a bit easier, but just be careful of your fingers. All right, so we've got our cabbage nice and fine. We're just gonna season this and then mix it through. And we'll just set that aside, ready to go. Just need to do a couple more things before we start making our omonomiyaki. So the pickled ginger that we're gonna put through the batter, we're just also gonna cut this nice and fine. And then lastly, we're gonna take our scallions or spring onions we're gonna separate the whites and the greens. The whites, we're gonna chiffonade or slice really fine for part of the garnish. So push your whites all together and then on an angle, you can throw a square off the edge. On the angle, nice and fine. And then for the whites, 
we're just gonna slice those to put through the batter as well. All right, let's make some pancakes. So, batter. If you were smart, you just would have made it in the bigger bowl. Salted cabbage. Tempura pieces. Pickled ginger. Whites of spring onion. And we mix. Time to cook. All right, so there's a couple of ways to cook this. You can either do it on a flat griddle, or you can do it in like a small non-stick frying pan or any non-stick frying pan you want. This is a much easier way to get a much prettier shape. We're gonna do one in here, and then we'll do one on a griddle after to see how much harder it is. But let's focus on this right now. So non-stick pan over a medium sort of heat and a little bit of oil in. Not too much though, just a, just a touch, because we are gonna put the pork in next. So next, we're gonna line the bottom of the pan with some pork belly and that pork belly is going to render out and put lots of delicious fat into that pan as well. On top of that we're going to put our batter and we don't want to pack this down we just kind of want to let it do its thing and settle in. If you pack it down now it'll become really dense. We also don't want to put a lid on this we just want this to steam itself cooked. So put that on I'm going to cook that over a medium heat. It's going to take about six or seven minutes, which takes seems like a long time for a pancake, but that's the time it takes. All right, it's time to flip this, and I'm not brave enough to just throw it in the air. <laughs> Mitch is looking at me like, you bloody wuss, do it. So what we're going to do, slide it out onto this plate. Put that back over. There we go. Another six or seven minutes on this side. We're laughing. One of the things I like to do is to glaze it a little bit, uh, just to get this omanomiyaki sauce a bit more caramelly. So I'm gonna put a little bit on the top and we'll flip it again. And we'll do the same on this side. You gotta be careful though, there's a bit of sugar in this so it's gonna burn pretty quickly. All right, time to turn it out. All right, time to garnish. So, the sauce, and you can be pretty generous with this. Nice, even smear. The mayonnaise. Again, you wanna be pretty generous with this. You can be really fancy, do these ones. Green scallions, bonito. and the nori. And there we have it, Osaka style omanomiyaki. I guess we better eat some. Mm. It's so good, it's like the ultimate savory pancake. It's kind of sweet, lots of umami, savory, lots of textures going on there. It's absolutely delicious. So traditionally these are done on like a hot griddle plate by chefs who are skilled and have done it for years. I am not one of those, um, but I thought we would give it a go to see how much harder it is. Same theory though, wow, that seems like it's really hot. <laughs> bacon down, bacon, it's not bacon, it's pork candy. Can you pull this off? What do you reckon, Mitchell? I don't know, pressure's on. <laughs> and full disclaimer, uh, first time I've used this griddle, so just making the excuses already. All right, I'm calling it, I think it's done. I guess we'll garnish this one too. As expected, they don't taste any different. So save yourself the hassle, use a non-stick fry pan. Thanks for watching, legends. Really appreciate it. Chuck me a like if you haven't already. Subscribe if you're not. And we'll see you next week for another recipe. Peace.